All right, so hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dwell Bueller, and I'm here to show you a lot about how to create a purpose-driven marketing strategy and how to basically tie all the different strategic elements with the day-to-day -day sales and social selling and that sort of thing together. So we want to be able to help you create your um, remarkable brand value, help you monetize your marketing, and help you more with social selling and digital marketing. So I'm going to be going a lot into some strategies uh, as well as some tactics to give you some clear ideas on what you can do and how you can do it. Um, and how to do it a little bit sharper and a little bit better because um, at the end of the day you know are you in the business of chicken or eggs and uh, I say that you know sometimes we get a little bit confused of what is our real business and what are we really good at and it's important to really kind of focus in on what that is and that's what a solid digital strategy will actually help you do it helps you focus it helps you reinforce what you're thinking and helps you uh, understand who your audience is and how you can actually help them more so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you are in the chicken or the egg business you just need to be good at it and that's what I'm going to show you how to put some of these pieces together and you probably heard this before oh you know online marketing is easy or business is easy or being an entrepreneur is easy and as, as a business owner you know that couldn't be farther from the truth right so it's not an easy road but we've been kind of lulled into the sense that well if you have a blog if you have some videos if you have checklists and trip wires and you know all these different things you can grow your business very quickly and unfortunately the reality is is it takes them a lot of time uh, to build up these assets it takes some time to be able to understand how they fit together and even to understand your audience a bit better so it's really important that you build them you put them together into a single purpose driven strategy and that's kind of what i'm going to be going through today and the the remarkable fact is is business operators business owners miss about 67 percent of their market this is just on a daily basis, right? So if you can imagine, what could you do with 67% more of your market if they were uh, more engaged and more making additional purchases or, or working with you on a re more regular basis? So I'm going to show you where that 67% comes from as well. So some pretty interesting things coming up. Um, you know, are you the chicken and the egg or are you farming? And what we really want to do here is really just to define your missing market, develop a digital workflow that will help you, right? If you look at farms, the ones that are doing well, they're usually well organized in proper rows. Um, they're fertilized, they're fed, they're harvested and, and grow again, that sort of thing. And so that's really what you want to build is you want to build this systemology, this um, uh, an operational procedure, a workflow as I talk about it as well from time to time um, and put all these pieces together so that you have these assets, you know, when to do what, when to fertilize, when to grow, when to harvest, when to, you know, go picking some weeds as well in the aisles. So it's really important that you get these working together and that you're, you're very clear on where that is and what you can do with it as well as you get into it. So as I said, my name is Doyle Bueller. Uh, I connect leaders to digital, and I'm the author of the recent book called Breakthrough, Unleash Your Remarkable Brand Value, Influence, and Authority. And basically, I take you through these seven steps of a digital workflow and, and so that they're easy to, easier to understand, easier to break through, and uh, give you create a, um, sorry, create a strategy as well along the way. Um, and I've been in the business world for quite some time. Uh, since about 2002, I started my first startup in Canada. Um, I started another one in about 2004, and that one became the, one of the fastest growing companies in Canada, or rather the top 50 fastest growing companies in Canada, and the top 50, sorry, the, the number one fastest growing company as well. And this was more related to um, uh, e-commerce and as opposed to specifically digital marketing but the point was was that as as an operator in the business world creating these consumer products uh, we really had to understand the digital side plus also the business side and I find that that's still kind of missing um, a lot of businesses have you know websites and we have fancy assets and that sort of thing but there's no real business behind it and hopefully some of these ideas will be able to help you so that's basically what I've been doing uh, since then is helping businesses create those strategies those digital strategies those understand what is required with their marketing and how to best connect with their audience as well so I've been doing that for quite some time um, so let's get into it. Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist, right? So I'm going to show you a few things that hopefully will be helpful um, that will uh, create a better understanding, give you a couple steps that you can use along the way as well uh, as you get into this. So what am I here to talk about? Help you understand the babble of online. There is a lot of it, right? This person says this, that person says this. Um, 
and you know what you could consider me as one of those persons telling you something totally different but what i'm really going to try to tell you is just to simplify uh, what you've been told and how you can actually create it and put it into you know smaller buckets or whatever the case may be and how can you how you can optimize it and, and even understand it as well so that it makes a lot of lot more sense to you in terms of what should i be doing next what should i be working on um, so instead of getting all these inputs from everywhere um, just kind of organize them into specific buckets as well and that will really kind of help you focus and then you can really focus on your business you know i asked you earlier what are you um are you a chicken chicken farmer or egg farmer um, and so you need to know that and a lot of times we get pulled and we think we're an egg farmer but we're actually becoming a chicken farmer so we need to kind of keep things structured and 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 uh, moving forward as well so that's really important um, what are your goals of this session and so obviously you know we're going to talk about digital strategy and digital marketing and how these pieces fit together but you know what are your goals of this session if you wouldn't mind taking a couple of seconds and just quickly writing them down what do you want to get out of this session um, and then hopefully we'll be able to um, uh, get you to that point as well and if not feel free to reach out as well um, through many of my social media channels which I'll, um, I'll have up at the end as well and uh, the other question I also would like love to ask is what are your biggest challenges of online um, for some it's building a website for some it's marketing for some it's you know how do you create a funnel and for some it's you know how do you advertise on Facebook as well so um, really appreciate it if you could you know spend a couple seconds on what are your biggest challenges online um, because once you understand that then you're able to sort of tick them off the box or be able to learn more about them and that sort of thing so even if you get through this and I didn't answer all your challenges or whatever again feel free to reach out but also just think of that as sort of an understanding that um, something you need to learn right uh, something you need to put together so digital is big it's massive there's so many different things going on so it's really incumbent upon you you don't have to be an expert right focus in on your business not on the digital side of it but you still have to understand what you need and what's important because then you can really um, sort of put those pieces together and that, again that's what a digital strategy is for is you as the owner are able to put one together then that's where you can then uh, relay that to your team relay that to your employees relay that to your customers as well so that they understand what it is that uh, you're doing as well and how you best accomplish your goals so the digital revolution is here right we all know that it's been around for uh, quite a while we now live in a massive global connected disruptive economy Right. And it is kind of scary. Business is not exactly this, not clear. Sorry, business is clearly not the same as it used to be as well. And things have changed, not just because we can use online, but the habits of consumers have changed as well. And how we use technology and how we enable consumers, how we enable our audience as well. But at the same time, it's killing our businesses, too. We got to be completely honest. Not every business is surviving. Even some of the big ones, the massive ones, who, you know, we would have thought would have been around for quite some time, um, they didn't understand what was going on around them, and they failed, unfortunately. So, and obviously, there's reasons for each one of them. But the fundamental thing is that did they have a clear strategy? And we don't really have time, unfortunately, to get into sort of why each business failed. Um, but it's important to understand, you know, what did they recognize? Were they able to adapt? Were they able to evolve? And a lot of businesses, small ones included, you know, you might think that you're a little bit more agile than a big business, um, but in some cases you're not. So it's really important to understand what those factors are and how they can affect you and your business on an ongoing basis as well. And technically, you know, we're, we're one click away from disaster, right? The little mouse, you know somebody clicks and away they go so um there you're not we're no longer are, are we in the space where you know a customer is committed to you it's more really what's in it for me because they need to understand they need to be very quick about their responses and that sort of thing so competition is fierce your customer has to be um understood very very quickly or they're gone right click 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 away they go from your website away they go from your uh, web assets and that sort of thing so it's really important to kind of create a whole ecosystem a whole system a whole bunch of assets that that you're able to help your audience help your customer um, along their buying journey as well so that's really really important so what I'm saying is you know are you getting can you get one click closer absolutely right 
one click closer means that you have assets available you have a way to communicate with your customer you have a way of understanding what they're doing and how they're doing it, and you have a way of connecting with them as well so it's really important that you kind of understand that yeah okay it's not all dismal we can get people to stay with us we can get people to understand what it is that we're doing so that you know you get to this point where we'd all like to be but you know making the deals and fulfilling the the customer um uh, their customer customer requirements and that sort of thing so that's really important to kind of understand that so that we can do that now one of the other sort of buckets out there recently is social selling and, and that's sort of really not only integrating um, social media but also integrating your content and in integrating your your um, uh, sales process as well so is that specifically to transformation no but social selling is important I'm not really able to talk too much about that in this session but some of these elements that we're building up here are very important towards social selling so you'll kind of see how they fit together but again it's not so much understanding the the fancy old buzzword right it's more about what does this word actually mean and what can I be doing with it so it's really important to take a look at it and see how these pieces fit together and how you can actually move them forward uh, with your audience as well um, at the end of the day, it's not about the like, it's not about the super fancy app, it's not about the cool website, the amazing social profile. Um, this is where the conversation comes in, right? This is about your story. Uh, it's really, really important. And of course, you have to update your story, you have to update your selling process. Um, it's not just a simple transaction of, you know, come buy my thing and I'll sell it to you and ship it to you for free or whatever, right? It, it comes down to a lot more. And I am talking obviously a little bit more about service-based business. Product-based businesses though are very, very similar too. Yes, you can buy a product and leave and never have to see that customer gain, right? But what if, you know, what if you could actually continue that, um, um, continue those interactions along the way then the next time they need something they're going to come to you and the next time and the next time as well so it's really important that you update your selling process to be able to to better fit with the needs of the customer as well because they're on this journey for you and you know you might be selling vhs tapes too right but you know is that really a good thing so you have to keep up with the times you have to keep up with um how do i adjust my assets how do i adjust my ecosystem so that my customer knows and my customer can obviously make a um, make purchases from me so although vhs's are nice right who actually uses them anymore but believe it or not there's still uh, some people that sell them in thrift stores and that sort of thing so if you're a thrift store great market vhs but otherwise move on to the next step as well so the pain of business online no real community no real influence uh, no leads, no sales, no profit, no known results, right? There's a lot of costs involved, which can get quite frustrating and that sort of thing. The real story of business online is creating conversations. It's having a community. It's creating these connections. And that's where the conversions come from. That's where the sales actually come from as well. Common thread businesses that understand their audience transform and evolve and become remarkable. And that's the important ingredient here is that you can't just sit down and say, oh, well, I've even from the aesthetic point of view of having a website, you know, people are looking for an updated customer experience. They're looking for um, things that excite them and interest them and that sort of thing. So if you're working with, you know, unfortunately a website that you've had for, you know, five plus years, um, some even 10 or 15, which you still see out there, um, you're not going to be able to create a very good customer experience for them and that's going to be that one click away from disaster as well so it's really important to to understand what's going on and how to I put these pieces together so that you can you can actually make a difference at the end of the day if nobody buys from you right you're going to be falling the same trap as everybody else um, and the thing that we usually get hung up on is that everyone does you know why doesn't everybody want to buy my stuff right why not it's good it's great it does this it does that it has you know this feature and that feature and that sort of thing but the brutal reality is that not everybody wants to buy it and that's totally fine right and this can get into a lot of um discussions about niching and making sure that you know you have you're talking to your specific audience as well but even then right you have to look at it who is my ideal customer and you know that's the person you should be looking at not everybody right that gives you the focus that gives you the ability to 
understand what customers I can help and which ones I can't because you know what at the end of the day you can't help everybody so look at focusing on in on your core customer as well now just because they're not actively shopping doesn't mean that they will never buy from you right so when you start a transaction when you start and I and I mean sort of a communication the community a connecting transaction um, th this is where you start that connection with people it's not necessarily to get them to buy right away because again if you look at uh, you know going into a retail store you don't necessarily want to buy something right away and what's the most annoying thing that happens when you go into a, a retail store somebody comes up and goes can I help you <laughs> it's like no I'm just looking right I haven't decided what I want I I'm just thinking about things so it's the same sort of um, process in the digital space as well that not everybody who's coming to look is necessarily going to be buying the challenge is that oftentimes as business owners we think that oh well that's that's a lead that's yeah they're gonna come buy my stuff right but guess what they're not and this is one of the biggest mistakes that can be made is that if we assume that we lose out on this whole other aspect of it of you know again back to the retail example where what will happen if you're actually if you come back to that store how many times do you come back to look or how many times do you you know research the product and then you make your decision so really in essence and I'm going to show you this in a minute um, you're focusing in on that small small segment that's there to pick up and buy something right now you know right away and here's my credit card those are those are fantastic transactions don't get me wrong but that's all they are they're just a simple transaction what we want to be able to do is nurture and build this value over time not just a single transactional sale because that's where um, we lose out in uh, the efforts that we put because we miss it we think well they if they don't come back you know what's gonna happen then and that's a very good question so you don't want to annoy them on that first trip either right you want to make sure that you help them that you get an understanding of their challenges and their needs and their problems and that sort of thing and how you might be able to fill it if they're not ready they're not ready but guess what you can move them forward and this is where the 67 percent um, of your market is typically missed and if you look at this what we typically focus on on a business is those in this three percent range right actively shopping and ready to buy so that's you know the holy grail these people are ready here's my credit card thank you very much I'd like 20 challenges is again not everybody's doing that not everybody's ready to buy all at once so there's actually from that if we split this up there's about 30 percent that you know what they're never gonna buy from you for whatever reason it's not a good fit it's not a good they don't understand how you solve the problem or something like that so guess what that's totally cool not everybody's gonna want to buy from you and again as I said before that's there's no problem with that whatsoever um, you do have what I call the currently unconscious of you so this is the 30 percent that are currently unconscious of you they don't net know yet that you fully exist they might have come across you in a social media post or they might have seen a website or done a quick search and just kind of got a glance um, and that sort of thing so they're still searching for their product or their service or whatever but you're not the main focus and, and again that's totally fine right you can't be the main focus all the time the next one is 30% they're aware of the future. So they've suddenly realized that XYZ.com um, does this. It provides these lawn chairs or whatever the case may be. So they are now aware of you and your brand and what you can do and how you can do it and that sort of thing. Um, and then the last segment is the 7% and they're really open to you. So if we take a look at this backwards, right? 3% are actively buying, 30% never. We have 60% plus the seven that are, you know what? They're not quite ready to purchase from you, but give them some time, give them some ability, help them with this, help them with their problem, help them solve their problem, teach them, show them, educate them. Um, and this is where the whole education thing comes into place as well as how can you do that? How can you, can you educate people across the 67% to get them to that position where they're, where they're willing and ready to buy as well? So again, we forget about that. 67 percent a lot of the time we just go well if it's either it's on or off either you're buying or you're not and guess what it's a total shade of gray here there's nothing that can really compare to understanding not every person that hits your site is going to buy and that's one of the things you see with google analytics and statistics and that sort of thing is like oh i have you know a million million visits in the last year or the last month which is fantastic but again not everybody's going to buy 
So if you could split that up and actually then provide some specific content, some specific ideas for each of those segments, you know, do you think you'd be able to help your audience as well, help your customers get a better understanding so that they are ready to buy? Absolutely, right? So this is not just about, um, rather it's not just about your business, rather it's about your online purpose as well. And this is where you can learn about delivering your true value to your audience. Uh, this is where you can create your selling value. This is where you can move them into your own digital ecosystem to continue the conversation. This this is where you need to put these assets in place. And I'll, I'll cover these off coming up uh, shortly. But you need to be able to do that to show your leadership, to show your authority, and to show your influence as well. So we have to think sort of more transitionally, not just transactionally as well, is how we can get into that. And Digital transformation is really about redefining your value pro proposition that resonates with your buyer's journey. And I say buyer's journey because it's not a seller's process, right? It's your buyer understanding this process, going through these um, uh, specific segments, that 67% that I talked to you, to get to that final transaction as well. So in most cases, most businesses will have to take a look at, well, how do we actually make this work? How do we actually produce that buyer's journey that resonates with our audience as well? And that's the key ingredient also. So let's talk a little bit about sales funnels, right? Um, we see them a lot. We hear them a lot. A lot of Facebook ads. <laughs> you might be inundated with Facebook ads for get your sales funnel, um, get your sales funnel today, you know, a good deal, two for one kind of thing um, but the point is is that there's a lot more to just putting up a sales funnel there are certain pieces that are need that are needed rather um, that will help you actually make a sales funnel work because just having that that's not going to do anything so you know as, as important it is to, to have some of these elements you kind of really have to look at how do these actually work together and how can you put these pieces together so it's con continuous it's congruent uh, it works in a manner that's strategic right that you've thought this process out and you can understand how it fits together and then you can build it and then um, which will create that interest in uh, interest in your products or service so current online sales funnel again you've probably seen a lot of these dollar dollar bills y'all buy my shit right um so it's really important to understand that that's what people see and people are very your audience is very aware that oh not another bloody sales funnel right so it's not a matter of just putting up a throwing up a landing page and you know having a tripwire and filling up your email list and that sort of thing it has to be much more uh detailed than that and you have to have an understanding of that journey that those steps beyond just that that will work and that will help the, the customer down the road as well. So it's really important to look at it more again, more strategically to say, how does this sales funnel actually fit with my business? And if I can build a sales funnel that does that and moves them, not just from um, a tripwire to an email list, like to me, that's quite pointless. You actually have to have a lot more solid foundation to be able to do that and to be able to get it to work for you. So. Um, that that's really important to work because a lot of times what we're doing with a lot of these sales funnel programs is you know flushing it down the toilet because we don't feel so good after we've set them up or after we've tried them or they're too complicated you know some of the sales funnel software which it's good at the base it's good but it depends how you use it it depends how you build it it depends on what elements you have to again continue that conversation continue that buyer's journey so could be flushing money down the toilet um, or you it just doesn't feel right you feel a little bit icky after somebody has gone through your sales funnel so you have to be aware of that and I'm sure that's happened to you where you you've kind of gone oh geez that didn't really feel that great that wasn't a good experience at all I'm not sure I like that whatsoever um, so it doesn't make you feel good afterwards you kind of want to go uh, you know what let's if you're the customer then it's like yeah I don't know if I want to do that again kind of thing so um, so that's what I'm here wanting to show you some of the specific elements that you can do and the reason is that sales funnel don't actually work is because it's most people are focused on the sellers process right do you have a selling process is, is what is typically asked of, of you uh, for your business and you'll go oh well I got this piece and that piece it's which is great right don't get me wrong you do need a selling process to understand those steps that you need to take but at the end of the day it's really about buyer's value cycle instead of a sales funnel that's what I like to call it because you're you're providing you're contributing to value across that entire process that your customer is going through not so much you you have to um, 
you have to bend and you have to understand what it is that they need to fulfill that need but that's your responsibility you have to kind of follow in in line with what your customer is asking you to do or again creating those interaction points that allow them to actually say hey this is what i would like to do this is how i'd like to proceed with that so the ultimate goal here is stop hoping digital works it does take a lot of work as you probably you know seen in what I've been saying it these aren't easy it's not as easy as putting up a landing page and getting an email list and away you go right these take some time you have to build these assets up um, into a complete digital ecosystem as well so that's really important that you understand what it is that we're doing at the beginning so that when you get to the end six nine twelve months down the road two years down the road that you actually have something that's working and it's working for you because you've ver been very strategic about it so just a quick um, shout out, you know, and again, it's obviously this is a, a canned presentation, but love to hear, you know, what is your experience with selling online? What has happened to you as well? Feel free to, to tag me in a post on social media, uh, Twitter or whatever, or send me an email as well. And just I'd love to hear these stories um, from time to time. You know, I had a wonderful experience because I put this together or it was just like horrible because I didn't do this or I did that. So I would love to have some feedback from you if you have a, an opportunity coming up. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is the three steps to monetize your brand value online. And this is really important because, again, we often think, well, back to social media and social selling, it's like, well, how do you make money with social media? And for 99.9% .9 of businesses, they can't answer that. And the reason they can't answer that is not because it's not possible. It's because they don't have the tools or the assets or the platform in place to be able to do that. And that's the key difference. If you have um, a process, if you have a strategy, you're much easier, much better able to be able to monetize that. And I don't mean directly saying, well, somebody's going to pay you for that Facebook pay post rather. What I mean is that people are able to engage you properly, get through that 67% to that 3% that they're purchasing from you. So how can you actually do that? Well, you need to design your brand value sequence. And again, this is this is elevated from your typical sales funnel. So I, again, I don't like using the word sales funnel because it sounds very um, inhuman. <laughs> So, but uh, what you want to do is you want to understand the brand value sequence, understand the steps that your audience member goes through and what value you need to deliver over time because that's the key ingredient is how do we get them from that um, not going to buy to buying, right? That's 67%. How do we actually get them there? Uh, the second thing you need to do is build your brand build your brand value sequence, right? Understand how to create a compelling value proposition and nurture your audience along the way, which is really important. And then the third one is maximize your brand value sequence. So taking what you've learned and saying, how can we optimize this? What do we make, have to make sure that we actually include uh, to make sure that it works together properly all the time? So because at the end of the day, your brand is what people say about you when you're not around. So that's why it's important to have this brand value and understand what's in it for me, right? Yes, your customer may be a bit nar narcissistic or whatever, or fun-loving or jovial or whatever. The point is, is that that's their personality. That's their trait, their characteristic as well. That's super important to understand and identify with as well. And if you can start to do that, you're going to be able to connect with them. And that's the key thing. And we've often heard about the no like trust triangle. And this is how we kind of start to put these pieces in place, right? Um, do people know you? Do they like you? And can they trust you? And I'm just going to go into a little bit of depth here to show you, you know, what these actually mean. Because a lot of times we talk about them, but we, they don't actually have sort of a depth of meaning. And I, and I feel that that's really important to be able to understand uh, these concepts a lot more so so know you is really just you know getting people know who you are getting producing value for others this is who you are this is media this is your video this is your blogs this is you speaking um, you at conferences and and this is your content right we've heard a lot about content marketing we've heard a lot about you know how you need to write a blog I mean a blog is part of it but it's not the only part so how can people get to know you it's by creating content how do people get to like you? It, it's really about sharing the same values and underlining behaviors, right? Are you fun? Are you informative? Are you crazy? Are you sympathetic? You know, what other traits do people enjoy about you and vice versa about your audience? Um, this is you being, we've heard that term quite a lot, authentic, 
right? So how do they get to like you? Well, guess what? Are you authentic? Do they, do they, can they see you? Can they understand who you are? Uh, and that sort of thing. And that's really important. And again, these characteristics are not so much just you as a personality, but also you as a business too. So don't think that it's one or the other. It can be both as well. It can be you and the business. It can be the business, but you have to understand that that's how the process that your customer goes through to, to get to know you and to make those transactions. Um, but I'll say all that saying like, we know, so I know you, I like you, but how do I trust you? And typically what we've seen is, oh, well, I can get an SSL on my secure socket layer uh, on my website. So I've got a secure credit processing, right? Which is great, but guess what? That, that's to be expected, right? Trust actually comes down to a lot deeper level than that on the human level, on the personal level. And I'm talking permission, privacy, and personalization. So that these are, this is how you can actually start to build trust and again, get them to know, like, and trust you so that they'll start, you'll, they'll start to see you and they'll be able to move forward with you as you provide more information, as you educate them, uh, as you really help them in their journey as well, which is really, really critical. All right. So step number one. Um, three steps to monetize your brand value online. So the first one is design your brand brand value sequence, right? Understand the steps if your perfect audience goes through and what value you need to del deliver over time. So here's a typical strategy that um, you can use, you can copy, you can take a screenshot, whatever you want. But if you're looking at sort of defining your value, defining your what I call digital leadership, you'll need a platform, you'll need an architecture as well to kind of really pull these things together. And one of the easiest ones you can do is look at these three simple things, right? Your brand value, your community, and your product and your content. Um, and if you're able to pull these together, this provides a platform. And I'm going to get into an example shortly to, to see, okay, well, how can we actually do that? How do we actually make that work? Um, so in simple terms, look at your brand value. And I, I've got some questions that I'm going to ask you as well uh, that'll help you with that. Uh, look at your community and look at your product and content as well. And that kind of sets the stage. And then you can do things. You can set up a website to reflect that. You can set up your content to reflect that. You can set up your social media posts to reflect that as well. So it's really important that you kind of look at where is my foundation? What is the foundation that I'm building? And that's really important for me and my business as well. And there's a concept called the zero moment of truth. And this is actually something developed by uh, Google. Um, and what they found is this relates to the 67% as well as that unless you spend, sorry, and just before I get into that, it, it, it um, uh, is reflective in that 67% of, um, uh, how to, how, of the market that we're missing, but also in terms of how do we actually make that work with our, our existing customers as well, the no like trust triangle. So what Google was saying during this research is that typically takes about seven hours, 11 touch points and four channels for people to get to that no like trust where they're ready to buy from you. Uh, if we can kind of tie in all those details together. So what that means is that you have to spend some time with them. And again, this is reinforced by that 67% because if you're not spending time with them, if, if, you, they're on your website and off. No, well, that's no big deal. That's just a transactional thing. But if you're looking at building a more trans transformational type business, one that helps people across their journey, then you have to look at how do we do this over time, right? So, and again, it's not specific for every single time, but typically, you know, how do you spend seven hours with someone? Well, you got videos, you got blogs, you got live video, you have, you know, um, uh, reports, you have books, you've got, you know, all ebooks, you've got all this different content um, that you can get out there that people will spend time with you over over the course of time as well, which basically you're ticking up like um, uh, you're ticking up a clock, right? It's a matter of how much time can you spend with that person before they get to know, like and trust you. Um, so it's typically about seven hours or 11 touch points, meaning that, oh, well, they, you know, read your blog post on LinkedIn or, you know, read your, your con, your book review or, you know, watched your video or whatever the case may be. So you have to look at how can you actually do this? How can you spread out that platform, that uh, digital leadership architecture so that it actually works for you um, across this time that we need? That's really, really important as well. 
The digital reality is that most businesses don't have a, a digital strategy. I've talked about that a lot, that you need one, but typically we don't have one. Um, because it's hard, because it's it's a little bit different, because we like to kind of go by the seat of our pants for the most part, um, and because there's no real clear instruction to say, well, this is how you need to do it. So hopefully, again, this is what I'm trying to show you, is that you can do this uh, if you have the right pieces in place and if you ask yourself the right questions as well. Um, so we, it's really important that then you can, once you have that uh, digital strategy, that digital leadership architecture, whatever you want to call it, that that gives you the platform to gain to get to that 67% of your market that typically wouldn't be there if you were just sort of winging it as a lot of businesses do because that's all you can focus on, that 3%. Yeah, well, that's, that's the one we need to go for because they're ready to buy. Well, guess what? You know, if you could spend, you know, even if you double that to 6%, um, of the people who are ready to buy, you know, would that help your business? And in most cases, the, the answer is yes. So think of that of, as a very small sliver. How do we actually get all those people who potentially could be customers to come uh, deal with us? Um, so some strategy, strategy questions to ask yourself, what are we about, right? What, what does your business do that's different than others? How do you kind of build that value? Um, you know what's really important why are you doing this business and and not just because i love it or i'm passionate or or you know something about that think in terms of the customer what's really important to them and how are you providing that value for them take a look at what you do best right this allows you the opportunity to see who is my perfect audience so what do you do best out of your process out of your products what is it that really connects with people and what is it that really kind of helps them in their journey um, what makes it work is it a process that you have is it a specific uh, tool that you use is it you know a way that you do it a methodology or, or just and a lot of people it's just well that's the way I think and which is totally fine but if that's the case then you know what write it down what makes it work why why do people come to you um, and then also take a look at you know the value you're going to deliver not just I'm gonna sell my widget a to you today kind of thing think long term right today tomorrow and next year and I mean those metaphorically right what is your value you're going to d d deliver today um, meaning right now at this point in time what could you do tomorrow meaning you know short term that sort of thing or next year how am I going to do this next year? What is the value that I'm going to be able to provide uh, in a year or more from now? So keep those in mind. Now take a look at um, Red Bull, right? We've all seen them. We've all heard them. We've all kind of drunk their elixir uh, and that sort of thing. So what are they about? They're about excitement, entertainment, energy, right? And what is their value? Well, to become a better person, they're more motivated and they're adrenalized as well. And that's really important to kind of understand that so instead of just a a rough idea about their product like if you notice I didn't say the product once but you know that if you can define that in terms of uh, what are they about that essence of their business well they are about excitement they are about entertainment and they are about energy right without even talking about their product and that's what's really important. And that's what's really different about uh, companies that look more strategically and look at, well, how do we actually define that value? And I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy to define that value, but you kind of have to start somewhere. You know, do you want to be the next Red Bull? Do you want to, um, you know, be that next company that people recognize you for your value as opposed to uh, your product or just your service, right? Which anybody can, re anybody can replicate over time so how do we actually put this all together um, and I'm gonna go into a couple more steps coming up but if you take a look at your typical product funnel right and I'll compare directly to Red Bull just so it makes sense um, which actually fits quite nicely so Red Bull what do they do they they have a low cost item it's what three dollars in the store occasionally you can get them for free if you're kind of in the city at the right place at the right time when they're handing them out or at festivals or exhibitions or whatever so they're giving you that product they want you to experience it they want you to to taste it they want you to see what it does and how it can help you and that sort of thing um, where do they move you next well typically they would um, involve you you'd see them on the television with you know Red Bull Air Sports or um, some of the more dramatic uh, biking and cycling and 
parachuting and that sort of thing. So they're building you up for this. Um, and then what, where are they moving you to after that? Well, guess what? They want you to come to their events. They want you to come experience, you know, a, a sponsored event, a sponsored concert, or actually even getting into those specific um uh, types of entertainment like skydiving or you know motorbiking or or whatever the case may be right so they've graduated you from this simple can of red bull to something that's really become more than them that's it's become more about that value of excitement of entertainment and of, and of energy and that's what their value is they're not selling you on this like yeah that makes them some money and it makes them some margin but really what's it what's it all about it's it's that bigger game that they're trying to play that bigger game that connects with you on a long-term basis, right? Not just short-term. So the big guys, they're doing this. They see that, hey, guess what? Yeah, we want them to buy Red Bull, you know, once a week or once a month or whatever, right? But that's honestly irrelevant. They want you to enter their value system. They want you to be able to see how big you can become with them as sort of your, um, with your wings, right? Red Bull gives you wings, as they always say. Um, so in simpler terms, it, we follow the same model. And again, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail, but we talk about a free gift, right? How do we provide some, some initial value that helps our customer, that moves them forward, that gets them into our process, right? Our methodology. And then what we do is we move them towards a product for prospects, which is really a more involved, a little bit more risk, but there's not a lot of cost involved. So this could be typically like a webinar or... Um, you know, a free trial or something like that that gets people into your system. Because again, we're trying to get them to know, like, trust us. And how we do that is we have to spend time with them. Um, and then finally, we move them to your core business over time, right? So this is your consulting. This is your service. This is, you know, your coaching. This is, you know, everything that you wanted to do as sort of your core business to really help businesses. This is the big ticket item. This is, you know, the where you have some good profit margin and that sort of thing so it's really important to see how these stay how these stages rather fit together um so that they can become effective and you can actually create some some specific steps along the pathway and i'm going to show you how to do that in just a second so how do we actually deliver value to your audience um there's four ways that that I typically map out um, the first one is just finding your interest and motivations right see more do more have more and this can be done with visuals video text you know just capture their imagination type thing next you want to move them to more of an enabling process so be more specific what can they see what can they do you know what can they have as well and and use more to reinforce what they're thinking to reinforce that value equation so no longer just a simple video, but a little bit more complicated video or a little bit more in-depth video or that sort of thing. Uh, the third step is actions, right? How can you engage your audience? So again, if you just sort of show stuff and don't do anything about it, that's too passive and, and it doesn't work anymore. Uh, so you really have to keep it ad, ad, sorry, keep it active. Um, and you have to begin the conversation and move people through what I'm going to show you, your ascending transaction model, depending on their needs and their, and their readiness as well, so that you have all these tools in place and so that you can move these people along that, that process, um, along their buyer's process, so that they will ultimately uh, do business with you. And then finally, the solution. So what unique, unique solution do you provide? Uh, what does the solution to your audience actually look like as well, which is important to identify? So in terms of um, how does all this stuff fit together, you know, value sequences and funnels and blah, 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 right? Um, and Red Bull and, and who knows what else is going on right now. But this is a way to really simplify that. And, and this is, as I said at the beginning, really my job is to help you simplify these steps so that you can actually put them in place, so that you can say, hey, this is, this is a simpler version. This is a sort of a, a broken down version because then you can build up on it and then you can teach your team and you can um, 
uh, show your audience as well so it's called an ascending transaction model and basically what you're doing is you're moving these transactions from step a to step c right and and understanding again that it's not specifically a linear journey it could have different uh, routes it could have different ways it could have different roads but the point is is that you have to move them along this process otherwise the no like trust triangle that i talked about is going to collapse and the 67 percent of your market that's not ready to buy from you right now is going to collapse as well so this is actually how you do it so the first thing is you set up your gifts so this can be the checklist this can be the quiz this can be the how-to it can be a podcast right it's moderate value there's no commitment and there's no risk as well you then move into your product for prospects so this is a higher value a low commitment and a low risk and this could be webinars this could be training right this could be subscriptions this could be a free assessment or a, a one-hour consult or a 15-minute consult or whatever the case may be some additional training that that focuses on in on a core problem so that's really the um, uh, where you can actually start to spend a lot more time with this so yeah you have a tripwire yeah you have a funnel but again how does that fit together in all these pieces well you got to move them to the next step and a lot of times businesses get caught up in that they well I have a funnel I have a landing page I have a tripwire but it's not working and it's well you know because it there, it's one piece of this this bigger piece that you have to put together that's really really important um, so once you have your gift set up once you have your product for prospects set up this is where you move to your core business right so this is your full and remarkable solution your gold silver bronze done for you uh, full commitment you know whatever it is that you charge this is this is where you want people to go so this is a you know a retreat this is a a training program not just sort of a, a webinar training it's 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 the essence of your business this is where you get down to your value your brand value this is where you get down to how do you provide those steps that can actually help your customer down the road all right so number two is build right we got a lot of theory so how do we actually build that um, again as I said just to reiterate how do you productize your service you have to look at your gifts you have to look at your products for prospects and you have to look at your core business and how do these pieces fit together and, and map them out and you don't can't just have one right you have to have build one right so it moves from the gift to your product for prospects to your core business so set that one up um, then move on to the next one for for uh, you know slightly different product or a different market or just to enhance what you've already been doing at that time and so this is how you build a typical nurture campaign right so what we have is on the left left side we have social media posts we have blogs we have website we have audio sound bites videos blah 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 um, we need to move people towards our landing page right and we provide a gift and then we move them towards an email sequence so th the difference is is that um, with sort of your typical funnel is that we actually move them on to the next sequence so if you look at the bottom right continue the sequence and enter new process as well so this is where it's really important to to say educate them inform them inspire them show them the way all that good stuff right how to put the pieces together but what do we want them to do next as well that's when we move them to the product for prospects so they have your gift it's a fantastic ebook it's a great checklist it's a cool little diagnostic whatever the case may be what do you want them to do next right help them in that journey if they just have that that's not kind of that doesn't have everything that they need uh, to continue they have a great starting point but it's up to you to kind of continue that that uh, point as well so now how do most businesses deal with the nurture sequence <laughs> if you look online they don't some do some don't what you'll typically see is a contact us page hey great you know that's fantastic um but guess what not many people are going to buy from that a contact us page to me is a waste of real estate because that only defines that three percent or even smaller that are willing ready willing and able to contact you to say hey because a lot of times you think well what am i even going to contact you about <laughs> right it's we kind of took it's quite, quite interesting the development and evolution of the web is we kind of took a way of contacting and a way of doing business from typical you know real world to digital and unfortunately we kind of miss that right yes you want to contact them but when right have you offered me any value no you know have you provided me a solution uh, i can see some ideas right so contact us is very limited in scope towards you know what can 
I'm ready to buy, I have a question, does this have widget A or widget B, right? So what about all the rest that are there that aren't able to do that? Um, uh, the other one is the About Us page, right? And what are, what's that for? Well, because we, you know, Simply Awesome, Beyond Compare, um, they're usually full of a lot of stuff and it's not always helpful to the audience. It's more helpful, hey, I'm pretty cool, I did this, I did that, you know, all that great stuff. So the About Us really should be more be about your customer about your audience how can you actually uh, fulfill that challenge that they have that pain that they have and what's really important to them as well because if you miss that people don't care about you right no offense but um, that's where the you know your one click away from disaster comes from is is if you don't understand that people need to connect with you um, you you really kind of need to put those pieces in place as well all right, so we have a value sequence detail. Um, it is kind of small on the screen there. So if you if you do want a, a um, an actual copy of that, feel free to um, email me or send me a message or whatever the case may be. So, but again, typically you want to follow this similar process. You don't necessarily need to copy a, an existing funnel or value sequence, right? It, it's how what are the steps that you need that your audience needs rather to to be able to help them solve their problems so look at it that way as well it's just not everything can be templated all at once all right so the last step is three steps to monetize is maximize right you maximize your brand value so create and implement the infrastructure that makes it work all together and again we've we talked about a lot of stuff a lot of different pieces but how do we actually do that what's really important to be able to say these are the pieces that'll work and this is how i'll help this is what will actually help me move things forward. So typically seven elements to maximize your brand value sequence. Number one is define your audience, right? Who are they? What do they do? What do they aspire to? Uh, how to hack it, create a persona that identifies your perfect customer, right? You really need to understand who your customer is, what their pain is, what the problem is, what their challenges are. Be as specific as possible. A lot of times we get into the... Um, the error that oh well if i define my audience too much then i'm going to miss out right it's that fear of missing out which is not the case whatsoever so the more you define it the more you can actually connect and you're calling out to that audience directly if you are you know if you are a chiropractor if you are you know a, a, um, a children's book author that means a lot more than just saying hey i write books or whatever the case may be it's like well i don't want to read just a book i want to read a book right about business about fiction about you know whatever the case may be so really look at defining your audience because that's going to be where you can make a difference uh, define the detailed process right what steps do you need to get your 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 touch points uh, your seven hours 11 touch points and four channels as well so take a look at outlining the steps your audiences need to be able to create multiple paths over time and again create one start simple just kind of map that out look at the ascending transaction model that I presented earlier and that's really that piece that you need what are those steps to get them from point A B C uh, and that sort of thing to ascend uh, the transactions toward that purchase or buying point uh, take a look at your landing page right you can't so many times you see Facebook ads and they send people to, the, to their home page, right? You have to be very specific. People are looking for very specific things and they don't have time uh, to worry about, oh, this planning page or, or rather this home page or whatever. So if you're if they're requesting information from you, you have to be as very specific as possible. And this is where uh, specific landing pages can be done and developed. So make sure they're very unique. Uh, they're focused on a single campaign, a single goal, a single outcome uh, for your audience. So that's then what you can actually help them with um, because they can identify that. It's no different than defining your audience. If they can't identify with who you're talking to as their as your audience rather, then they don't know who, who that is, right? Likewise with landing page, if they can identify what this piece of information is telling me, they'll quickly kick, click off as well. Uh, number four, email management, right? So have the tools available to deliver your value over time. Um, that, that's really important. And again, it's not a sales message. It's not, hey, I'm awesome. Come buy my stuff. It's really, you need to help them. Okay, so you've identified their problem. You've identified their challenge. They've downloaded your ebook. Okay, let, let's help educate them. Let's help inform them. Let's give them those pieces that they really, really need to be able to go to that next step. And you're educating them. 
right? And that's key because again, don't think of it as transactional. Well, if I'm educating them, I'm giving my stuff away for free. And it's, it's not like that at all. You're spending time with them. They're reading your stuff. They're going to uh, pick up on what you're saying and, and how you're saying it and that sort of thing on uh, the, through the email, but also through supporting videos and supporting documents and, and all that kind of stuff. So don't think of it as again, transactional on educating them for free it's no it's you have to think big you have to think strategic you have to be able to deliver this uh over time with your value because the ultimate goal is to get people to spend time with you and unless you're doing that you're just like everybody else right all right so yeah so build the sequences that respond to your customer needs that bring them through this scenario and again it's not just to pitch them your your next program it's not like that at all it's to educate them and to inform them to say hey have you thought about this could you consider that you know what about these steps type thing yes you need to pitch you know without question but there's a time and a place for that and it's not during that educational process it's more towards the end once they've collected some information once they've understand who you are and what you can do for them and that sort of thing the fifth one is content, right? Tell your complete and remarkable story through visuals, videos, branding, text, and that sort of thing. So deliver your story across all channels, which is really, really key, um, as I mentioned before, and many times as well. So number six is ads. So you have to grow your sphere of influence beyond your, you know, your social media circles or whatever the case may be. So look at behavioral advertising campaigns. Uh, look at specific campaigns related to certain... Uh, activities or landing pages or whatever the case may be because you want to be as again as specific as possible so you want to show them exactly what they want to see as well so keep that in mind and the last one is measurement right so develop key indicators of performance don't just do this for fun you have to do this for business uh, perform or die, perform or die right without being clear without understanding what it is that um, you're measuring <coughs> you're not going to measure it All right, cool. So we're pretty much ready to wrap up. So those are the three steps to help you monetize um, your marketing and develop a proper digital strategy. So again, look at design, your brand value sequence, look at how do you build this brand value sequence. And the third one is look at how you can actually maximize your brand value sequence as well. So, uh, you know, in summary, making sure that how do you deliver your brand value? Well, create increasing value over time through your transac uh, sending transaction model. Build your no like trust triangle. Create your touch points, the seven hours, 11 uh, touch points in four channels. Uh, understand and deliver your value to your customer, the what's in it for me. Build your value sequence and create touch points. Create the time that you spend with them and that's how you actually create customers as well. Remember, it's not just about your online purse. Rather, it's about your online purpose, not just about your business to deliver your true value for your audience, to create your selling value and to move them into your own digital ecosystem to continue the conversation uh, as well. So just, you know, make sure you trust the process too. I've, I've gone through a lot of different factors. I've gone through a lot of different uh, tactics and strategies. So, you know, trust the process that that works, that it helps people, it helps them to understand how you can actually simplify uh, some of these systems as well. So that wasn't too bad, right? <laughs> But now it's time to kind of get things in action. You can actually download the slide deck on SlideShare uh, with a couple of extra slides as well. So bit.ly slash doylebuehler33. Um, you can go through the uh, digital leadership uh, quiz or assessment just to see sort of where you fit in, in terms of uh, some of the activities, some of the strategies, some of the content and that sort of thing. So just a fun little uh, quiz as well. Uh, if you feel like connecting with me, you can get uh, my book uh, Breakthrough at uh, all digital, all rather all online retailers around the world um, or in a few bookstores as well um, uh, throughout Canada and Australia as well. And if you need to contact me, please reach out. Happy to help you out in your journey. I can, you can also connect with me on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and whatever else comes up next as well. So... <laughs> And so I want to leave you with that and just simply say um, it's been a really, um, uh, really great presentation. I really hope that I've been able to provide some ideas and some insights into, you know, how do you organize your, your digital? How do you organize your online marketing? How do you put all these pieces together that are super, super important? Um, and how to sort of stop working 
off the cuff or you know on the seat of the, your pants or that sort of thing so it's really important to build the strategy because that's what builds your future and without a clear strategy you are kind of zip zipping and zying and, and that sort of thing back and forth because you have no real focus so if i could leave you with one real message it's, it's find that focus that you know finds that value of your business and then start to put those pieces together because once you can do that everything seems to be a little bit easier because you can organize your content you can organize your social media you can organize you know how you do your website and that sort of thing by just understanding that core value that you're going to deliver and that's what's going to give you those more customers. That's what's going to give you that bigger audience that you can work with as well. So, all right, without further ado, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate uh, you spending uh, the time with me. Uh, I know it means, I know you're busy, but it does mean a lot that you're able to, to sit back and enjoy this. And hopefully it was helpful. If you do have any questions, as I said, uh, please get in touch with me. Until then, my name is Doyle Bueller, and I will see you online.